Okay, uh, good evening. This is the Town of Arsenal Waterways Committee meeting for Tuesday, October the 22nd. Uh, present for the Town of Arsenal, we have uh, Deputy Harbor Master Jay Horn and Harbor Master's Principal Assistant Pam Swider Cohen. We have uh, committee members Greg Geegan, Gary Schramick, and myself, Paul Everson. Uh, so that constitutes a quorum at this time. Before we get going, I'd like to just uh, note that tonight's meeting is being recorded and broadcast on channel 18 and in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20. I must inquire if anyone is taping this meeting. If so, please make their presence known. All right, hearing none, we'll get on with the agenda. Uh, first up, we're going to have uh, let's see, we scroll back. We have, uh, I believe, the minutes from September. Jay, can you scroll down? Thank you. There it is, September 24th. Uh, has everybody had a chance to look at those, review them? And if so, I'll entertain a motion to accept them as written. I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes of the Waterways Committee of September 24th, 2024 as presented. Yep. I second it. All right, thank you. All in favor, aye. 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 And that, that passes. Next, we have a notice of intent. Jason Stone Trust, Jason Stone, 183 Bayshore Road in Hyannis. Map plat 325-180, applicant proposes to removal of approximately one foot of material in the area specified on the plans. If, uh, 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 this is Roy Okorowski from WRS Engineering, representing Jason Stone. Um, yeah. am, I, am I on audio? Just checking. Yes, go ahead, sir. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Stone has... Um, had this property for a while and since then he's permitted a boat lift um that's all gone through conservation and everything he keeps a i think it's a 24 25 foot grady white or something like that um on this lift and he's abided by the rules basically there's the sign there specifying the depth of the bottom of the lift above the substrate and the bottom of the boat um, which is in proximity of the two and two to two and a half foot range. Um, I guess Mr. Stone hired me. Basically, he's saying he thinks it's been filling in and he would want a little more water, basically in the range of eight inches to a foot, because right now he can't put his lift all the way down. So because um, it would be below the requirements of the town. And the cables are all set that way that don't let him. So at lower tides, he can't get his boat off. And so we took kind of a look at the area and a bunch of photos. And I, I surveyed the whole area on one of my plans. Can you flash up the other plan, Jay, with the arrows? Is that possible? Well, we're waiting for that. Doesn't he have a jet ski dock there too? Um, when I surveyed it, there was no jet ski dock. He mentioned that he was going to inquire about a float. Is it a floating one? Or yeah, attached. He he said something like that. Um, but I didn't. When I was there, it wasn't there. Um, okay. Um, so um, that's really not part of this filing. Um, subsequently, also, no, that's not, it's like a, it's another plan. It's not a chapter 91. It's, it's page two of my plan set has a lot of arrows on it. It would be at the end of the, if the plan, are the plans attached to the filing? We, hmm. yeah, that's weird. I mean, I can share my screen. Um, do you want me to do that? Yeah, sure. So basically, he's asking for permission to direct. Well, yeah, I just wanted. I kind of want just wanted you to see. Um, 
Yeah, it should be in the plan. If there's two plans in the plan set, so yeah, it's that one. Uh, or it's the other one if it's not that one. Yeah, so see, we kind of looked at the littoral drift, which which we think is happening here from all the sediment that's coming out of here. And I looked over a long period of time, and then there's a number of licenses that have been done before. And when you originally put it in, you know, the previous owner and everything, they were listing depths of in the order of 3.2 feet in the area. The last surveyor that was in here that permitted his boat lift and everything had a had a sounding of, and this is in mean low water, not what's on the plan because the plan's in NAB 88, around 2.4 feet of water. So based on that information, what I shot in the order of, you know, what you see here, I think some of it could have been filled in. So we're applying for basically dredging is only allowed if it was caused by littoral drift or sediment in. And, you know, from the facts I have, that's what I believe. So we're asking around for one foot just in this rectangle so he can use his boat lift in more water. We had a shellfish survey done. Um, this is an area close to shell fishing, I believe. The material will be, uh, it's all sand and it'll be brought either permitted somewhere for beach nourishment if allowed with the same grain size or it'll be brought off site and disposed of. And that's basically it. We're gonna do it with a probably a small, you know, excavator, you know, with a like almost like a backhoe on a one little barge and then put it in dumpsters. Um, we're not gonna do it hydraulically or anything like that. And uh, we're under a hundred yards, so we don't need a water quality cert. And that's what we're asking for. Okay. Um yeah, I'm familiar with that area. And I think looking at that dock, looking from this perspective here, just to the right, you have a lot of rocks there too, right? Yeah, so he's got some rocks on the east side. Um, right, right. You know, on that of it, he keeps yeah, his boat. Yeah, there I'm not really concerned with, with anything. Like that rock's not moving, obviously. That big one that's right yeah. there, uh, it's too massive. They're just going to work around it. And then under his bow lift and, and the areas right in front, there's none. Um, that's, you know, that, that's why okay, he hired so we, me and that's what I'm trying to get through. <laughs> okay, so the area you're uh, looking to have the, the the foot of dredging done is just that square that you highlighted before underneath the lift. Yeah, so it would be, in, it, it's like just a little bit to get him out to that water he needs where it starts to drop off where the shade line is right here. Yep. Um, and that's, you know, if it doesn't impact navigation, it didn't really impact shellfish, it's sort of just a upkeep of the, what I think yeah. and believe is coming in here to make it, you know, more usable for him. Yeah. Um, Harbor Masters Department, do we have a input from you guys? Yeah, obviously this committee deals with navigation primarily. I don't have any issues with this proposed location um what time of year would this project if approved what when would you be doing it um so dmf will close it for winter flounder so it would most likely be in in like the fall you know the fall before the winter flounder season it's only it's literally going to take a day to, yeah. to you know they're going to impose those uh time of year restrictions when we file for notice of intent if approved um with comments from dmf and and the town so it most likely would be that time of year. Okay, yeah, great. So that would be my only request is that you just notify the Harbor Master's office if it is going to be in season so that, you know, we can mitigate any potential hazards to navigation with the barge. But other than that, I'm okay with it, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, committee members, uh, Greg? Uh, I, I, uh, I'm I sorry about that phone in the background. I, I certainly have no... Um, uh, no, no problems with this. I, I, I noticed a uh, one of the images, the boat at low tide. I'm wondering if one foot uh, is enough. Um, it, 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 I mean, I shot it and I measured his his freeboard and everything, and um, you know, if they're, you know, typically when you're dredging too, you allow up to on a project like this a half a foot over. So I could see them, you know, trying to get out a little more. Just that's what contractors do, and uh, but it'll be permitted for one foot, and then it, it has. I mean, it has to go through the town, then it actually has to go through the DEP. So in the DEP, we're gonna ask, probably ask for one plus a half. Um, you know, no. just that's the protocol. Okay. 
Okay, there you go. Thank, thanks very much. Thank you, uh, Gary. No problem with it. It's fine. Yeah, I am, uh, like I say, I'm familiar with that area too, and I, I don't have a problem with that at all. So uh, it would be a favorable recommendation from the Waterways Committee on the project. Great. All right, guys. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Roy. Um, <clears throat> Next up, we have Town of Barnesville, Department of Public Works, Matthew Warble from Calmus Beach Boardwalk Replacement Project, 670 Ocean Street, Hyannis, map 324, parcel 41. The applicant proposes to remove the existing damaged Calmus Beach Boardwalk, install a replacement ADA compliant five foot wide raised wooden boardwalk. Additionally, the project will connect to a wooden transition ramp and mobile map rollout ground access system. Do we have Matthew from the town on this? Yes, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Matthew Robo. I'm the senior project manager for water and sewer projects for Town of Barnstable DPW Engineering. And uh, I was brought in by our structures and grounds team um, to help them uh, with the NOI filing for this project. Um, if you guys want, I'm happy to share my screen with you. And uh, I've got a short presentation just kind of outlining what the project idea is um, to present to you guys. Yeah, that'd be great. Go ahead, sir. Uh, would you be able to uh, provide me with screen sharing ability? I just did, Matthew. You're a co-host now. <clears throat> OK. OK, are you guys able to see that screen now? Yes. Okay. Could could you? So this, I'm sorry. What was that? Could can you zoom in a little, one? sir? Oh, of course I can. So overall, this project has to do with um, a small section of the 670 Ocean Street parcel, um, which is the Calmus Beach um, Park area. Uh, what we're mainly proposing to do with this project is a replacement of what still remains of the existing Calmus Beach raised boardwalk that connects the um, the snack bar area to the parking lot and then leads out towards the main beach area but stops just short of uh, where everybody is actually setting up with their chairs and everything within when they're going out for a day on the beach. Um, what kind of necessitated this work in the first place with some damage that was sustained during winter storms of uh, the year 2023. The last terminal section of the boardwalk was actually lifted off of its uh, current placement by coastal storms flowage. And during the summer and spring of 2024, uh, we got uh, approval from the conservation agent to do some uh, kind of necessary removal of sections of boardwalk that were kind of unsafe for the public. Um, so about 84 feet or so of the existing boardwalk structure has already been pulled out. Um, over the course of this summer, I submitted an RDA application with the conservation department uh, to be able to install a seasonally deployed uh, ADA accessible wooden access transition ramp and a Moby mat system, um, which are the flexible boardwalk systems uh, that you see uh, in some towns of the Cape just to replace that uh, section of boardwalk that we had removed with conservation's um, verbal approval. Uh, what I'm now doing is submitting an NOI application to uh, replace the remaining portions of the boardwalk in kind with a new same width, five foot uh, wide ADA accessible boardwalk, um, essentially connecting areas of the parking lot the snack shed over here, and then where the Moby mat uh, boardwalk will uh, be seasonally deployed. Um, so I've got some pictures. This is generally speaking, uh, the abutting properties uh, to the north, we've got a condominium complex, a couple of residential single family homes, and then a couple of town owned parcels. Um, for the most part, our abutters, and really we're working on a small area of our site. Um, what we've got for wetland resource challenges in this area are we're working in NHESP uh, rare and endangered species identified habitats. Um, we're also working within FEMA flood zones and uh, in a couple of areas, a couple of windblown uh, vegetated coastal dunes and some Rosa Ringosa encroachments on the boardwalk as well. 
Uh, what we've done so far to date is submitted NOI filings with MassDEP, uh, the Conservation Commission, which we went attended their hearing uh, last Tuesday, 1015, but we're continued to next Tuesday's 1029 hearing and have submitted the uh, application materials as well um, to NHESP for review uh, for MISA. Got a couple of pictures of the existing boardwalk. Uh, this is looking out from the existing Calmas Beach parking lot area. Right here, the uh, windblown deposits of sand and coastal dune encroachments that I had mentioned a moment ago. Also some of the Rosa Ragosa encroachments over the existing boardwalk structure. Uh, there is one all uh, small section of vegetated coastal dune on the last segment uh, as you leave the uh, Calmas Beach snack bar area heading out to the beach as well. Um, and all of these are kind of reducing the walkable width of what remains of the boardwalk. Um, picture at the top here is a reference section where it comes out of the uh, boardwalk, the um, snack bar concourse area. And then another picture of the vegetated coastal dune encroachments uh, as you look up towards the parking area. One thing I'd like to draw your attention to is just this fence section is uh, referred to later on as part of our temporary impacts. Uh, this will be the start of what we're going to be planning on using as a temporary access path uh, for a skid steer to be able to come out and do removal and replacement of the boardwalk. And then I've got a couple more views here, just looking out as you uh, head to the beach area from end of the boardwalk. Originally, uh, the structure that remained extended to about this point here uh, within uh, the area between coastal dunes. Uh, but now you can see with conservation approval, we've pulled out those sections. Uh, this area here depicts where we're planning on uh, putting our temporary construction, demolition, and construction trailer um, out in the paved parking area to reduce any impacts to the wetland areas. And this is an overall um, view of the boardwalk replacement area. So this is the plan that we had filed. The town surveyor, Shane Brenner, has taken care of all of the um, wetland delineation work and um, location work for the actual site plan. And then I developed essentially um, the Moby map connection plan showing where we were placing the existing boardwalk with Moby mat. And then this is the area where uh, the existing boardwalk is to be replaced in kind. Up here, I've got just a short detail of what we're planning on for the typical boardwalk sections. Um, I've worked with PJ Kelleher, uh, the structures and grounds uh, supervisor on an outline of how they would be constructing the replacement boardwalk. Uh, being that this is gonna be in a wetland resource area, we're planning on building out 12 by five foot sections boardwalk and trucking them in um, at the time of installation via flatbed truck. Um, they'll then be connected uh, via hangers and some steel screws. Um, boardwalk sections will also include quarter inch spacing on the Trex decking uh, that makes up the walking surface to allow stormwater to infiltrate um, and windblown sand to infill the void space beneath the boardwalk. Um, overall, uh, the project we're hoping is pretty straightforward, being that we're not really in. Uh, anticipating any permanent increases in wetland disturbance areas. But as part of the construction, um, we will need to use a skid steer to bring in uh, the boardwalk sections and also haul, uh, haul out the remaining sections. So that uh, fence section that I alluded to earlier, we'll be removing that. And we have a six foot temporary skid steer access path uh, that we're proposing using for um, the installation period of the new boardwalk. Uh, other than that, to mitigate the impacts of uh, construction through the area, we're proposing to do all of this work outside of NHESP um, rare and endangered species um, time periods when they're present on the site. Uh, we're waiting for NHESP review to kind of outline what those restricted time periods would be. Um, other than that, we've got some limited work staking um, done along the base of the coastal dunes and along the edges of the boardwalk installation. 
Um, we'll be putting in on the base of the coastal dunes um, some uh, erosion control fencing. And as far as removal of the encroachments of the existing dunes, we'll be doing this uh, to the maximum extent possible with just hand tools. Uh, same thing with the installation, uh, minus the use of the skid steer to deliver the sections and haul away the, um, the refuse sections of old boardwalk. Other than that, um, the only other impacts are we're going to be connecting into the Moby mat system and the wooden access ramp, assuming that they're already deployed when we go to do this work. If they're not deployed yet, then they would just be connected after the fact, um, whenever the seasonal restriction is uh, no longer in effect. Um, other than that, we've got the construction period and demolition period trailer uh, dumpster out in the parking area. We're going to be securing any trash from that um, to make sure that we don't have anything blowing around site after the fact. Um, there may be some regrading work associated with uh, laying the new boardwalk sections. This would be done by hand tools as well. Um, any excess sand that we have stored would be stored within the wetland resource area and not removed from site. Um, this would be re-leveled if there's excess sand um, within the limit of disturbance area or used for the infilling of the um, boardwalk void space. Other than that, we're proposing to leave the boardwalk shallow so that uh, there's still wind wind driven sand effect and we're not um, impacting any patterns for wind blown sand deposits. Um, we work with Darcy Carley and the conservation department to identify a maintenance plan that we can uh, implement for clearing off these um, dune encroachments in the future, as far as just clearing our walking surface. And um, at the completion of the construction, uh, we'll also be going through the area with an industrial magnet to pick up on any uh, metal fasteners, screws, bolts, or anything else that uh, may have accidentally been dropped. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys may have on the application. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, from what I can see, it really doesn't impact the navigation and uh, the waterway. So it uh, you have no intention of bringing this all the way down in, out into the water then. So... Um, that would be the only question I have. Uh, so I'm, I'm all set with it. Uh, let's go to the, uh, uh, Greg. It was a great presentation, uh, in favor. Okay. Thank you, Gary. Yeah. In favor. Thank you. And Harbor Masters Department, any input? Approved. Thank you. So that's all set approved by the waterways. Thank you, sir. Perfect. Thank you for your time today, everybody. You have a good night. Thank you, sir. Uh, next up, we have no mooring appeals. Um, old business, we have mooring regulations. Yes, sir. So I do have a little bit of update on that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it, you know, as I have uh, told the committee before, it went to the town manager. Um, he wants to have a public hearing so that if anyone is opposed to the regulation changes, um, they can uh, speak to that. We are shooting to have it before um, January 1st. We want to have this meeting hopefully in November. Once we uh, hold the public meeting, we'll, we'll advise the committee of the date. Um, <clears throat> those you know, comments, if any, will go to the town manager and uh, we'll get this officially signed off on. So again, our expectation is to have these uh, regulation changes in effect by January 1st when the mooring renewal season starts. Okay, thank you. The uh, As you know, our November-December schedule is off a little bit because our December meeting, if it fell on the normal rotation, would, would be on Christmas Eve. So we have that moved to December 17th and the November meeting I have as the 19th. Um, due to Thanksgiving being on the 28th and people would not be available. So uh, the 19th of November and the 17th of December would be those upcoming meetings. So just. Um, yeah, at this point, Mr. Chairman, the committee already approved the regulation changes. Um, right. So, you know, I would just, it would just be for notification purposes only, but you know, the, they've been approved already. Yeah, and marina fees? 
Yeah, I do have an update from Brian. Um, <clears throat> the proposed marina fees, which were supported by waterways, were submitted to the town manager. They will be heard at a town manager fee hearing in November. The scheduled date right now is November 12th. There will be a public comment period of up to 30 days regarding the fee changes. If supported by the town manager, they will also go into effect January 1st. Okay. Thank you. Next up, new business, termination of AGL services license. <clears throat> yes, sir. So, um, first of all, I just want to speak a little bit about my role here in the Department of MEA. Uh, it's, it's very unique. Excuse me one second. Our radio is on for emergencies. Uh, it's a very unique position. Um, I am the deputy harbor master here in Barnstable, and I'm also the mooring officer. And these are two very uh, different positions. As deputy harbor master, I'm allowed to use uh, discretion, and I, I do so every day. If I can help somebody, um, I'll go out of my way to do so. I'm allowed to bend some of the regulations uh, in order to help people. I can make exceptions. You know, that's what the nice thing about discretion is about. I can deal with individual cases, um, you know, on a one by one basis. And it's a it's an it's a great part of my job as um, the mooring officer. Things are a little tighter. I, I, I rarely get to use discretion as the mooring officer in Barnstable because um, the regulations that I adhere to have been around for a long time. They were constantly updated as uh, things changed. Um, you know, the, the mooring program has a very limited resource and a very high demand. So historically, people have always tried to find loopholes and, and kind of buy their way into, uh, <clears throat> you know, that program to get themselves a mooring. And I think my predecessors did a, a great job of of tightening up those regulations and, um, you know, making sure that it's fair and equitable to everyone. So um, it's hard, you know, it, it's a hard position. Um, it's uh, very demanding, <clears throat> lots of, you know, public complaints about unused moorings and so forth and so on. And I, I do the best that I can. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I have to maintain the integrity of the office. And um, <clears throat> I think a great example of this is recently a change of vessel came in front of the committee. It was denied because he was over the guideline for uh, that particular area. In this particular instance, he had a 38 foot vessel. He went and wanted to go to a 42 foot vessel. Um, it was in a non-designated area. So it really didn't affect our mooring wait list. Um, and it wasn't, you know, hurting somebody getting off uh, the wait list because of the space. And one of the committee members said, you know, I don't I don't see the problem here. Why, you know, why was this even denied? And, um, you know, the answer to that is because, is you know, basically that's my job. I can't pick and choose which regulation I want to <laughs> enforce and which one I don't. And I don't get to make those, you know, finite decisions when it comes to uh, someone, you know, being over the guideline. And that and that's why I have you know, this committee. Um, I think it's a great <clears throat> relationship. You know, I deny it. It's my job. And then I bring it in front of you guys. And if you guys approve it, I always go along with your decision and we we move forward. So, you know, the point I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make is that, you know, I'm, I'm not over here rolling uh, with an iron fist. I, I, <clears throat> I, I try to be um, as accommodating to I can, you know, with, with the general public. But uh, at the end of the day, you know, I have a job to do, you know, and that kind of leads us to uh, AGL uh, Mooring Service and their termination of their license. Um, it wasn't an easy decision. There was several meetings here at the Department of MEA. Um, the highest ranking officials in this department were uh, in attendance and um, it was a mutual decision. We, we all made the agreement to, to move forward with the termination of this license. I, I struggled with it. <clears throat> He's a small business. Um, he works on the water. I'm 100% you know, in favor of these, of 
of my morning servicers and my fishermen. I want to do anything I can to help them. Um, this kind of, uh, you know, started back in 2022. And um, at that time, I sent AGL a certified letter. Uh, mm -hmm. In that letter, you know, that we have documentation that he received, um, there was eight violations that were <clears throat> presented to him that um, had occurred here in, in, in the town of Barnstable. And, you know, the end of that letter basically said, you know, any further infractions will result in the loss of your license. So, you know, warning was given and it was a fair warning. Um, the violations that were listed were serious. I had a lot of problems. And <clears throat> again, I kind of put it on the back burner because it, it was a tough decision. Uh, since that letter in 2022, I just re you know recently went through my uh, logs when this um, you know topic came up again and resurfaced, and um, you know we've had 17 documented violations since the letter was received, and a lot of these are serious. It's not you know little um, little mistakes here and there. Uh, unfortunately, tonight I can't get into details um, from the advisement of my legal department. The uh, mooring servicer has the right to appeal this decision. And he was given the letter on October 16th. He signed for it. He has 14 days to appeal it. Um, and therefore, uh, we're going to have to put it on the agenda for the next meeting if he chooses uh, to do so, to appeal that decision. So can't get into detail right now, but it wasn't a great year um, for this particular mooring servicer. Numerous violations again. And, um, you know, unfortunately, I was I was, you know, forced to make a tough decision. And I made that decision because I, I can't have my other mooring permit holders affected by, um, you know, by, by, by another mooring company. And that's ultimately what, what happened. I have to look after my entire mooring field and uh, the safety of their vessels and the safety of their vessels being moored in the town of Barnstable. And unfortunately, um, you know, this particular servicer is not, is not living up to the standards um, that we, that we expect and that we require here in the town of Barnstable. Uh, so therefore, again, I made the decision to terminate his license. Um, it's going into effect November 1st. Uh, we will not be notifying his customers until the appeal process is done. So it'll be uh, in limbo for a little bit. Um, but I, I also want uh, this servicer and his lawyer to know that um, they need to manage their expectations. If this goes in front of waterways and it, it gets approved and you guys, you know, ask me to give this particular individual um, another chance, I, I just want them to know that, you know, you're an advisory board and that uh, the decision, you know, will ultimately be made by the Harbor Master's Office in terms of the appeal. And that's all okay. I have to say about that. All right. Thank you. Um, for the Everson, may we heard on this? Uh, just, just a minute, sir. Uh, for the other committee members, I received a letter today, a, a copy of a letter um, from Mr. Revere, who is the counsel to AGL. And basically, uh, it outlines what Mr. Horn says about the, the letter of receiving that and uh, the decision to terminate uh, his uh his license with the town November 1, and Mr. Revere uh, says that he would exercise that uh, right to appeal and would be submitting that to the Water Waste Committee on or before October 31st, 2024. Um, so that would, if that is the case, then we would set this forward for our November 19th meeting. So with that said, go ahead, Mr. Revere. Okay. Uh Thank you, members of the committee. I I came here just to listen because I, I got an email this afternoon from town councilor Kate Connolly, who I duly respect, and she said, uh, the committee will not discuss the merits. Uh, rather, the chairman, the chair will inform the committee of the issuance of the termination letter, and the recipient has engaged counsel and has indicated an appeal will be forthcoming. They asked this to be removed from the agenda. I expected merely Mr. Horn would state that uh, 
and I'm not going to get to the merits of any of this, state that the termination letter had been issued. Instead, we got a long history starting about enforcing the regulations. I strongly disagree that it's being up. I'm very concerned. I'm very concerned that it is being publicly disclosed without the completion of an appeal, time to prepare, to tell AGA's story, and without notice, and that this letter that you'll see says, well, I'm going to go notify your customers that you're out of business. I compare this to if you were a builder, and the building commissioner said, I'm going to send you a letter to remove your license. The building commissioner came to the Zoning Board of Appeals and said, told the wor world on you know, local television that this person's not in compliance without giving them the full chance to address this. I am utterly appalled. This is this man's income, okay? I ask you, please, not to have a Zoom meeting, but to have an in-person meeting so that we can address these issues, okay? I was very nice and calm when I came to this. I expected merely, I've issued a letter, you can read the letter, maybe he'll file an appeal or not. That is it. I truly respect Mr. Horn. Uh, these are difficult legal issues that I bring up. And I just am concerned that this amount of detail went on. Uh, that's it. I want to thank you, though. I, I know you got a hard job, Mr. Horn, and members of the committee. But it does bother me. This is uh, involves 300 or so clients. Uh, Mr. Niehoff's income and life, and it's getting aired publicly throughout following the proper process, and it bothers me significantly. Thank you so very much. Okay, thank you, sir. So again, uh, we will expect if you're going to file something on or before the 31st of October. Uh, yes, uh, we will do so. And uh, as I said, I what, I'll file it. I'll request that it be a public meeting. I just wanted to give you a heads up that I would suggest that it's appropriate for a matter of this magnitude. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on, we have next Save Our Fleet, Preserve Barnstable Harbor. I believe someone's here to speak on that. Mr. Kadesh, is that correct? You're on mute, sir. You should be unmuted now. I can hear you. You can hear me? Okay. Um, my name is uh, Jeff Kadish. I'm the owner and operator of the Aquarius. I've been involved in the China boat business for over 50 years out of Bonstable Harbor. I first want to thank this committee for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Bonstable Harbor Charter Boats. Furthermore, I want to thank and commend both uh, Harbor Master Brian Taylor and Jay Horn for their efforts. We recognize the positive accomplishments that they've done and what they're doing. Historically, Barnstable Harbor was a major player in the charter boat industry on Cape Cod. In the early 70s, I remember well, there were 12 charter boats in Barnstable Harbor. We currently have five. The charter boats provide a very positive economic impact to the area. My information is not anecdotal or just rhetoric. I would like to refer anyone that's interested to two economic studies that are available for supporting my position. One is the for hire industry in Massachusetts. And the more profound one is the economics of for hire fishing industry in the Northeast by Scott Steinbeck and Aisha Brinson. And this is published by, by NOAA. These studies are quite overwhelming, replete with statistics supporting the for hire fishing industry, Massachusetts. When considering the multiplier effect, these numbers can be readily extrapolated to the positive effect that it has on Barnstable Harbor in the local community. Restaurants, hotels, tackle shops, fuel, marinas, truck deliveries, and the employment of local residents, just to name a few. 
Constable Harbor has gone from a fleet of 12 charter boats to five, causing us to refer charters to other harbors. We no longer have the number of charter boats to accommodate the business. There is currently a dearth of charter boats in Barnstable Harbor. Our issue is unique to Barnstable Harbor. Other harbors, like Sisuit, have increased, increased the number of four higher vessels. Rock Harbor is at capacity with approximately 20 charter boats. <clears throat> Other harbors have augmented their numbers of charter boats, while Barnstable Harbor has seen a significant reduction. The charter fleet in Barnstable Harbor, which was once thriving, which was a once thriving industry, is close to being eradicated. I'm not here to reinvent the wheel or dramatically amend rules and regulations, but I think we all agree that there are times when rules and regulations become anachronistic and need to be modified with the changing of times for the benefit of the local community. I again commend Brian and Jay for the job they're doing and respectfully ask this committee to look favorably in advising the Harbor Master to accommodate the preservation of charter boats in Barnstable Harbor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I have one question for you. What do you attribute the change from 12 in the 70s down to five now? Um, I, I think it's the way the, the current regulations stand that when a slip becomes available, it goes to the next person on the list. What I'm proposing is that we earmark or designate a certain number of charter boats, uh, of slips, I'm sorry, of slips to preserve the uh, charter boat in the for hire industry in Barnstable Harbor. Okay. I think as part of uh, our ongoing uh, marina regulations and the marina fees and uh, the reconfiguration, you know, uh, annually of, of some of this stuff. Um, that that should be a uh, that should be a, a point. And do you see that there would be a group of charter boats that, given the opportunity to take these slips, would be here in a heartbeat? I do. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. And about how many do you think? Um. I think a reasonable number is to attempt to get Barnstable Harbor back to where it once was in the vicinity of anywhere between at least six or 10 slips. Okay. All right. Thank you. And my question for, um, for Jay, I know you're more involved in the moorings, but do we know how many, or even Mr. Cadis, if you know, how many charter boats are on the Town of Barnstable wait list for uh, Millway Marine, uh, Millway. Um. Uh, there's no way to identify that because people sign up for the wait list as individuals, <clears throat> not as companies. We don't allow companies on the wait list. So that would be hard to determine. We would have to call everyone on the list to see if they were a commercial entity or not. Um, I feel for this gentleman, you know, it's a struggle that all the towns are having right now. You know, the, the fishing industry is getting pushed out. Um, again, we're trying to keep it fair and equitable to everyone. So, you know, we've established a wait list for these areas that are in uh, very high demand. I will tell you, Jeff, that um, the mooring field right outside of the marina um, is not being utilized. Barnstable Harbor East, Mooring Field, Barnstable Harbor Main. I've got a ton of room out there where Billy Lister is. I can accommodate big fishing boats. That wait list is open and I have very hard time um, filling spots there. I go through the list every year and people don't take moorings. So maybe there's a way we could get these guys moored off of Barnstable Harbor and they could come in and pick up their passengers. Um, and conduct business that way, that might be an option um, for you guys moving forward. I know it's not as nice as a slip, but um, it would still get your foot in the door and, and it allow you to access, you know, Cape Cod Bay. It's a viable option, but it's, again, it's not a complete solution to the problem. Yeah. And I, I respect what you're saying, Jay. And Jay, Jay there's also an, an issue for parking. Um, yeah. There's nothing designated for the commercial. Uh, charter boats. 
So that yeah. needs to be looked at as well. If uh, I know Brian was thinking about uh, exactly doing what uh, Jeff was proposing um, in the future for designated uh, areas for charters. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, well, thank you for that input, sir. You're welcome. Okay. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? So you have the uh, mooring list lotteries go live November 1. Can you fill us in on that, Jay? Yeah, don't get excited, guys. I'm sorry, this was um, supposed to be edited. Yes, we are having a lottery. Um, it was originally discussed to be launched November 1st. Uh, unfortunately, um, the timing of the regulations don't allow it just because of when the applications would have to come in for the winners and when they would be added to the wait list. We're not allowed to take any applications after November 30th. So uh, we were originally shooting for that date, um, but unfortunately we have to postpone it. If I had to project a future date, um, it, the discussion right now is March 1st. So yeah, we're gonna have another wait list uh, mooring lottery. They're all very popular. Everyone in our system will be notified. It'll be um, in a press release, you know, at town hall. We do our best to make sure that the public is notified uh, of this event. So please disregard the November 1st. I apologize that it's on the agenda. Um, <clears throat> potentially March 1st, sometime in March is when we're gonna be launching that. And the other thing I just wanted to let the committee know is that, <clears throat> excuse me, we are, uh, limiting the amount of winners of names that we're adding to the wait list in general moving forward. I have set a cap at 25 names. And the reason is, is that I want to keep it fair and equitable to all. And I want to give those people who didn't win uh, a second chance to join the next lottery and get their names on the list. So in the past, um, my, my, my wait lists were uh, very depleted. When I got into office, the numbers were extremely low. And when I held those lotteries, I <clears throat> entered 50 names, um, 100 names, the Katua Town Dock. And, um, you know, we needed it at the time. We, we needed, you know, a, a fresh batch of people to, to move and to fill these moorings. So I don't regret that decision. Um, but now that we have the list at a healthier number, um, we've decided to limit the amount of people that will be chosen uh, only so those who didn't win um, can get a second, third, you know, fourth chance of getting their name on that list. So that's how we're going to do it moving forward. Okay, thank you. Um, correspondence, I mentioned the previous letter from Mr. Revere, and also we have, I don't know if the committee members got this one, was from the... Uh, Town of Boswell local comprehensive plan draft future land use map. Uh, they're just going to be asking us for some input. And basically, it shows residential commercial areas. They do, however, have some areas designated as the uh, the marina use. So we've got Osterville, Prince Cove, uh, Hyannis, and Barnstable. Uh, like, well, all of Hyannis. Uh, and then we have Barnstable Harbor. Um, but nothing we need to respond to right now. Um, okay. Anything further on your Harbor Master report, Jake? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously the boat traffic has slowed down. Um, <clears throat> we're not actively patrolling at this point. We're still responding to emergencies as they come in. Um, the, the big news right now is, is that all the slip contracts are ending uh, October 31st. So if you have a boat in one of our marinas, it needs to be removed um, by October 31st. On uh, November 7th, we'll be having Dock Day at Barnstable Harbor. Uh, if you haven't seen that before and, and you're off that day, it's worth a drive by. We hire a crane. Um, <clears throat> lots of individuals breaking down the docks, bringing them over to the pit. Um, we haul them grab them with a forklift, stack them in the field for the winter. Um, it's a fun day. Everyone here at MEA enjoys it very much. We are also getting ready for uh, the ATOM removal. So just notice to the public that starting November 1st, we're going to be removing the aid to navigation in the town of Barnstable. We always start in Hyannis. 
uh, work our way over to the Centerville River. And then um, <clears throat> lastly, we do the Katuit area. So for the first two weeks in November, you're going to start seeing those atons uh, disappearing, and we'll be cleaning them up, putting them away for the year. We evaluate <clears throat> ones that need to be replaced, um, you know, along with our slow speed, no wake signs, et cetera. So, you know, we stay very busy in the fall. We're also getting ready for, you know, uh, morning renewal season, which is right around the corner. We just had to order all the decals for 2025. Uh, so they're here in time. There's a lot of work done by our administration staff during this period because we have to, um, you know, record all our data. We need to record our wait list, um, our mooring permit holders. Everything needs to get locked down so that there's no changes. And then that way, when we flip the switch for, for January 1st, um, people can have a smooth transition with our online system so they can renew online get their mooring permit sticker and, you know, renew their slip contract, get their sandy neck permit. Um, you know, we do everything here. So we're staying busy and, um, you know, we're looking forward for the winter. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just to follow up on a previous thing we have, uh, I'm starting to hear some feedback about the, uh, the news that the Coast Guard is going to be involved, uh, engaging a company for removal of rocks at Collier's and Southwest Rock, where it is starting to, get out about that and many people are happy about that. So that's moving in a in a good direction. Um, do I have anything further from committee members, Greg or Gary? All set, thank you. And if not, I'll let, if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Second. Uh, in favor, aye. Uh, aye. So again, our next meeting will be on the 19th of November. And thanks everybody for participating.